Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to start building walls. And the very first wall that we build is, as you can see, a rake wall. Now this wall, while it's facing the rear of the house, actually will go to the left. So let's go ahead and get into the video. What I wanna cover in this video is the layout and basic framing. Then in the next video, we'll sheathe the wall and we'll get into the rigging and we will set the wall. Okay, here is the first trick of the video. I have double top plates to cut for the rake wall, so instead of marking them square, I use my big 12 speed square and I force that Makita 10 and a quarter inch XGT through those cuts. Because this is a 512, I can cut all four of the two by sixes at the same time, getting identical lengths. And because they're double top plates, those bevels are going to be perfectly lined up with really only one measurement, right? Or did I do two? Whatever. I think I did too. Lined them up. But anyway, this saw is powerful. However, cutting through four like this is kind of stupid, as you can see, and you can hear it protesting. So back it up. Go ahead and cut those. Let them fall off. Those will become blocks later. Having said that, this was the stock blade on the saw. I highly recommend the Diablo blade. It's a 40 tooth blade. We don't seem to have this problem. Uh, both of us were like, this is kind of annoying. Okay, I'm gonna pin it every four feet, not in a stud. That looks good. And then I've got a king post, so I'm gonna stay back from that. That looks good. These I'm just gonna pin together. Go right there. Generally speaking, we try to build our biggest walls first because they take up the most room. Now in this particular case, we're able to frame it at the rear of the house, even though it's gonna go behind me where that guardrail's at. It's 32 foot front to back, so this wall is 32 foot, but the floor itself is 48 feet, so as you can see, we have lots of room. It's also nice and easy because we can bring materials in from the back. We're gonna be able to lift it from the side and the back. And I've got this five and a half line already there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it on the framing side about every four feet. I'm making sure that none of those nails land where any of my framing is, studs, king studs, or posts. Toenail at about a 45 degree aiming so that it does not come sticking out of the back. Having said that, half the time it does that. I don't really care. These nails have an insane amount of holding power and a lot of people get nervous, but I'll show it later. You know, lifting with the forklift, it actually takes quite a bit of force to break those nails loose. The end studs are all calculated and they are also story pulled. It's the height of your wall plus your heel stand, less your bottom plate and less the raked top plates. Then once we have that number, we write it down. Even if it's wrong, all of our rake walls will be that number so that they're all basically so that they all get the same fix if needed. Then we put a flat two by six in, that's going to be our drywall backing. It also keeps the end nice and straight. Good enough. He's not just amazing with the 10 keypad, folks. Sometimes. Well, don't hurt yourself. I'm not gonna hurt myself. Where do you want it? Good job, you guys. Good job. Hey, uh, good job. What a beautiful day to be rake wall framing, right, Kyle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pumpkin spice season, huh? Nope. Americano. Ooh. 
and then I'll give you the, the two numbers and we'll square it up. Let me just hit this while I'm here just because then I can forget about it. Forget about it. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget Grant. about it. Or is it Jack then? Well, forget about it. I'll give you the height. So what we always do... Oh, come on, Timmy. You didn't see that. There must be a camera on me. So you do it the same way, you tack it down. Yep, it's all tacked, I laid it out. I always lay out long points of the stud, so at the halfway. And that just makes it easy for the cut guy to... Okay, I just took too much depth out. So I'll give you the height as soon as I get this um, top plate shot on. Let me get this hose out of my way. Things. Yeah, <laughs> it's cross training. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay, I'll give you this height. So 32 foot run, and let's call that 117.9 is the height. Let me tack these, and I'll grab that 100 foot tape. So we're taking the the length of the wall, which is 32 foot, and then we're just measuring to the short point on the outside top of that stud. That's going to allow us to square the wall. Um, Once the wall is square, then we're going to pull parallel. I'm not going to pull square both ways. I want to make sure that it's parallel because I got to match my roof. Things going to have to come my way. 117.9. I'll pull a diagonal and then a parallel. Wait, I just said that. Incidentally, this is an open reel tape from Stabila, and I am loving this thing. I ended up getting another one when we did foundations. It's got kind of a funky design, but it's a steel tape, rolls up quick, and it doesn't stretch. That's not right. 33 feet, 5 and 9. At this stage, it's just the skeleton, so it's super easy to move. And then that flat two by six is great because I can step on it, keep it from moving as I tack it. Yeah, I'll have you double check me. I think we're good there. As I mentioned, I'm square. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull dead parallel because I have to match the front walls. Now, you might be wondering, is it always right on the money? We Man, check was, it, it's always within an eighth or eye. less. So some of that, to me, I chalk up to maybe the guy that's running the tape, how you stretch or sag the tape. The tape itself doesn't stretch, but you know, just how tight you're pulling it. So, yeah, 32 foot run, 117.9, I think it was the rise. And I had 33 feet, five and nine. And I can, I can run you through it too. I got no problem slowing down. Once we do this. You just do the 117. I always look at the run as the longer number. Because pretty much it always is until we get over 1212. That's the run, right? Then you just diagonal. Yep. Yeah, that's right. You just do it in feet. Whoa. Okay, so go 32 foot run. So that's not a good 32 foot run. And then go, what was it? 117. Yep, and nine. Rise, and then click diagonal. And then I hit feet, because I don't want to. Okay, that's what I thought I did. I just must have hit it wrong that time. 30, uh, 5, 9, 33, 5, and 9? Yep. Okay, so what I did is I, I pulled that one square, tacked it, and then I pulled parallel. parallel. So if you want, hook me on that corner, and we'll just double check. We're usually within an eighth. I forgot the diagonal. 33, 4, 5, and 9. Okay. <laughs> 33 foot five and a half. All right, so now. Yeah. Yeah, that was, and I always just measure it after the fact, because I, I calculated this. In fact, I'll run you through that, that's good. So our heel stand or height above plate, our wall heights are 109 and an eighth. The that standard. It's like a standard? Yeah, or? it's the standard pre-cut. Okay. So 104 and five eight studs plus four and a half. Gotcha. Um, sometimes they're like 109 and a quarter, but I'm just gonna go with what the what they're supposed to be. And then our rafter height is gonna be 10 inches. 
So if I calculate two plates, three inches on a 512, I get three and a quarter. And so there's my three and a quarter. That's not right. Oh, it's because it should be from here. Yeah. So that's all I did is I, I did the math and I story pulled this inset. Gotcha. So I pulled 109 and an eighth, added 10, then I, I drew down the three and a quarter and up the inch and a half. I feel like we save so much time on these walls, the more that we double check things, the better. So it was like 114 and 3 eighths, which is the number that we'll, we'll probably, yeah. What I'm gonna actually do, now, even if this wall's wrong, we're gonna make all of them 114 and 3 eighths, and we'll adjust the rafters. So I'm gonna mark that 114, six. Now it's written, <laughs> so if we ever need to reference it. Sometimes we write it on the sawhorses, but then we can't figure out where the sawhorse went. Okay, so let's do this. Let me see your, um, your tape measure. We're gonna just make this super easy. If you hold it right on the corner, I'm just gonna run your tape out. Yeah, just, yep, right on the underside of the plate. Yeah. And basically, your tape can stay and mine's going to stay. And so I can just read off numbers without having to pull my tape out. And you're just gonna run the math. So I always like to do king studs first, and then we pretty much always do a double king stud. So if you put in, did I say 64, seven? That's what I should have said. And I always mark the sharps, so. Uh, five inch pitch. Yeah, so 64, seven as the run, six, four, seven. Sixty nine thirteen, and I'm gonna write double king. Okay, then the next one, how about go 142 and seven? 154, five, that's what I got. 154, five, and I'm gonna go king, king. And now I'm just gonna do a center stud and we'll lay out studs off of that. So how about 96, 12? Or three quarters? You get it right, it's a calculator, right? Yep. 12 sixteenths of this thing. Four and 13. That's what uh, that's what I got. Okay, let me scribe these real quick. Now, there's my king. Here's my stud. So if you pressed M plus again, would it go back to the original number? I actually have no idea. <laughs> I wonder if I hit clear and then go M plus. What was the last number? 74. Uh, 26, 52, 74. Okay. This, this one is actually super easy because it's very symmetrical. Oops, that's not right, I'm an idiot. 26 and 52, and then 74. Oh wait, it does. It brings it back. Okay, so. Wait, it should be 78. Oh, really? I believe so. Oh, yeah, because two. Okay, so that's this guy. And it was off of this guy. Did I do the other one at 78? I'll go check it. And I'll, I'll make sure going uphill. I think there's a few of them that are wrong. I got 52. Yeah, I did 78 on this one. Sure. 52, 78, 104. Oh, let me go one more and then we'll check the 78. Cause I think this was my reference. Yeah, 78. Okay, and then I'll check this guy. Yep, I was 78 there as well. So it's just that last one I messed up. 
Okay, if you get something to write on, I'll give you this side in order. And I'm just gonna measure them, I'm not gonna calculate them. It's like, by the time I do the keystrokes. Okay, 125 to the sharp, they'll all be to the sharp. And they should each just be a foot taller. Or, that would be a 612. Uh, 135. How about 145? Should be able to fill in the math. 155, 155. How's the boot 165? Are we adding 10 to each of these? Is that what it is? Okay, I'll check the last one. I think you just, yeah. So 175 and 185. Yep, 185, and then it should be 175. And then there will be a double king. And I would recommend, you know, cutting that with the beam saw and doing it at one. It's just nice and easy. That's gonna be 174. And I always write KK next to it, so I know it's double king. Um, the other king is 141 and seven. And there's only two studs left. 135 and 125. Hey, top of the morning to you, as they say in. Guandwana land. That's a new one for you. Hey, we're about ready to, to start really getting going on this rake wall. Kyle is the sawyer. I will be doing the framing, and then he will be doing all the sheeting nailing. So <laughs> we, we're going to trade it off. He's got a younger back. The best quality of Kyle, in my view, if I can get this thing to zoom in, weak mind, strong back. Right, Kyle? Yeah, he can't even hear me. He's just agreeing. So that's also what you want in a, so in a Sawyer is a yes man. <laughs> okay, let's see. How fast are we going to be able to do this? I'll timestamp it because I don't even know what time it is. We're just having so much fun. There are a million ways to do what I am showing here, but as I mentioned earlier, we have double king studs. That's to help keep the wall stiff during lift and also in winds. The way I like to do this, remember, we cut them at the same time with that beam saw. As I just line up the heel at the bottom, I tend to stand on it. Two nails every 12 inches, 12 to 16 inches all the way up. By standing on it, I can beat it with my hammer so that it's nice and flush on the drywall side. Those bevels are gonna flush out perfectly at the top. So I'll go like four feet, tack it, then I'll work back, four feet, tack it, work back. So it's a little bit of back and forth, but it gets me really good results. Do the same thing with the trimmer. Now, when I did this one, same thing, got it tacked, set it on the ground and stand on it and I can adjust it as I go. You can see a little bit of walking back and forth. Okay, I did end up putting the trimmer on the wrong side. I did not show that. that in this video because the video was gonna get too long. <laughs> but suffice to say, I blew it. Now it has been fixed. The trimmer is being nailed on top of the double king. Then I will roll it and it will face the trimmer on the other side. No rocket science, but I can guarantee you that all framers will get this wrong at least once a year we will get it wrong even more often than that. You totally could do this all on sawhorses and be working at waist height. Oftentimes I will do that, especially if I'm working alone, but I do find it's better to do it this way because you get them tighter. But again, I'm gonna waffle and I'm very inconsistent. Hopefully my framing's not. Okay. Sometimes I'm gonna do this on sawhorses. It all kind of just depends on how I'm feeling and where, you know, how we are uh, set up and spread out. It's just one of those things, I'm fickle. Now, because we nailed them together, or because I nailed them together, how am I gonna get my header attached? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Two five inch Simpson Strong Tie SDWS timber screws. These things are insanely strong because they're five inches, they go right through the double kings into that LVL. Now, one thing you might be noticing, 
additionally, too, well, it's easy for me to say, single ply LVL. This is a Roseburg Rigid Lamb. Our engineer designed that for us. Plenty strong, and then they're nice and consistent. Oh, I love Don't really skirt. need a header in a rake wall, but here we are. Because we do have the header in the rake wall, I'm going to go ahead and put a plate on top of the single ply Roseburg LVL and then a plate on the bottom. That just gives us backing for drywall. The other advantage of the LVL header is we can get more foam insulation in at the header and they're a whole lot more uniform than sawn lumber. You might be noticing I only have three cripple studs. We do not put cripple studs up against the trimmer or jack stud because they don't offer any value structurally and they are omitted in the code. So three cripples. You're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, but generally don't we just cut those out of scrap? It only takes a second to install them. You're 100% correct. However, just think about this. We're saving two cripples per window times the number of windows times the number of houses we build a year. That's actually a fair amount of insulation. And we want more insulation at windows because the windows are the least insulated, if you will, spot on the wall. Remember that the window itself is really, if it's supported at all on the sill, it's only half the distance from the very last cripple to the end. So like the one on the right, there's like nothing there. Toenails are plenty strong. The one where I'm at right there, toenails are plenty strong. And don't forget, we are gonna shear nail all of these wall sheathing panels. I think I'll do a whole video on this in the future. That'll stir up some controversy. If you want to put them in, put them in, but we're just trying to make a rational decision for why we are leaving them out. Now, I eyeballed the kings. They're nice and straight, but what I always do to transfer my layout is I snap from the bottom plate to the top plate because remember, we laid all of that stuff out. We squared it up, and this is a nice way for me to just straighten things through. Things do get squirrely the longer the studs get, and I found that this isn't really a needed step on a wall this height but it's still a step I'm gonna take because it's like, it's a reset point, and I really want all of my edges on my wall sheathing to be centered on studs. For whenever they can just get cut out of the scrap. To the short, how about 34, 12? And then they're all, the rest will be to the sharp. How about 38 and a half? Uh, 48 and a half, I'm gonna say, 58 and a half, and then the last one, let's go 66, 66, one. So while all of those are being cut out of all of our off cuts from these studs, I can go through and I can start nailing these. The whole, it's just choreography, right? We always start with windows because they're the most time consuming. While the Sawyer, or the cut man in this case, is starting to cut studs, then I can get started on the window, oftentimes cut my own package. And then while he's cutting the remaining stuff, I can go through and start nailing it all together. Top plates, remember, they were cut at the exact same time, so they are identical lengths, but I always flush up in the middle there. I want that joint to look pretty. If the double top plate is a little short or a little long, I don't really care, because it's gonna go hang over the side that nobody's gonna see. And it's not gonna be too long or too short because we cut them at identical times. Wow, you, you saw it earlier with the beam saw. So that just guaranteed that things are gonna be nice and flush. If they're flush at the top, they're gonna be flush. Um, all the way at the other end at the bottom. Now, when it comes to nailing the double top plates, you'll notice that I get it tacked, and then I do the same thing as I did with those double king studs and trimmers, is I kind of dance around because I want to make sure that everything's nice and flush. So I can manipulate the material if I go like every four feet, tack it, and then nail in between where I have nailed. So let's just say I nail at the top, then I'm going to skip yeah, go and go four overboard. feet. Anyway, you get the point. The you get plate, the point. Since we're going to be lifting it... Yeah, 
it's just a process. We're just trying to work it because we want things to be nice and flush. And I don't crown top plates all the same way. I just throw them on the sawhorses and cut them because I know I'm going to take this step and because I can stand on them so that they're right nice and tight to the floor. Then later you'll see how we do our overhangs. It's going to guarantee that this wall stays nice and straight. Okay. All right, if I want about an inch and a half air gap, 15 inch ridge. All right, let's go 178.7, 178.7. And you just tell me if I'm in going too fast. <laughs> The six by six post was just like an inch short of what we needed. So what I did is I just put a, a, like a third plate at the bottom, basically a block. And that got me enough that we could cut off that. Anyway, you get the point. I just needed just a hair more. And the way to get that was to put a plate in there. Now it is time for me to just do the same thing. We're just trying to work things. We tried to, to make sure that that six by six didn't have any really weird crowns out because that might telegraph through the wall. And so now it's my job just to nail it all so it's nice and flush and nice right, and strong. So that good. is the beam pocket for our five and a half by 15 inch ridge. And then I'm leaving an air gap. You will see that later when we get to the roof framing. I tend to shoot with my left hand so that I can beat things tight with my right hand. Also, my hammer becomes a cane because I am an old guy. But like, I switch it off sometimes, right? We don't want repetitive use injuries, so make sure you switch off. Okay, I think that is a good place to stop for this video. In the next video, well, as you can see, we're going to get into the wall sheathing, the rigging, what the blocking looks like, our soffits, and then we're going to go ahead and lift the wall. So there's a whole lot more to cover in the next video, so stay tuned. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you feel like it was worth it. It really does help me out. And if you don't think it was worth it, then don't hit the button. Thank you, though, for watching, and we will see you all in the next video.